Well guys, good luck. Today I'm gonna show you the most fascinating thing that has ever been discovered in the existence of the universe. And that is 60 frame per second videos on YouTube. I know, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely crazy. A lot of people have tried to achieve such greatness, but they failed miserably. They have succeeded, and I shall tell you exactly how to do it. Now, first I'm gonna go through all the steps, which aren't too many, and then I'm gonna explain why those steps are necessary. So the people who just wanna know how this works can just watch it and then get the hell out. People who are more interested hear the full story. Anyway, I'm gonna assume that you know how to record and edit videos in general with whatever program that you choose to use. So I won't go into tiny details. Just the basics. So first of all, you're gonna need a 60 frame per second video. This is one of those options you're gonna have to find on your frapses and the stories and whatever else you use. And just find wherever they show the frame rate and set it at 60. Now everything you record will record at 60 frames per second. Which means it'll take twice the space, because that's twice the normal usual frames per second. Once you've done that, go record something. Like, uh, I don't know, a game. Probably a game. What else would you record with the story or fraps? I have no idea. But a game is a good start. Record a game. Preferably want the game to run at 60 frames per second or more because if it doesn't well you're, you're not gonna see any difference <laughs> between the 60 frame per second recording and a hypothetical 30 frame per second recording so yeah once you've done that go to your video editing software and make render two videos first video is gonna be made only out of the video footage of what you just recorded. But before you render, make sure to stretch it to twice its length. So you're gonna have a video of let's say one minute and you're gonna stretch it to two minutes. Keep in mind that this is not like copy paste kind of stretch but slow down kind of stretch. The result has to be a video that is twice the length of the original video footage and runs at half the speed. Render this. Then you take the audio of the footage you recorded and you render it normally. Except without the video footage. This will result in a black screen and as the audio of the game running in the background along with all the other sounds that you have recorded. Once you've done this, you're gonna have to upload both of these videos to YouTube. When those videos upload, what you need to do is go to your YouTube settings or HTML5 playback and enable the HTML5 player. And the final step is to go to a YouTube mashup site, put the two videos, run the mashup, make sure to set the original video, which has the video footage, to run at twice the speed and enjoy your 60 frames per second video. I recommend this particular YouTube mashup site because it has a really nice function for synchronization meaning that you can easily start both of the videos at zero and run them without any problems synchronized just as they are supposed to be. Okay, so now that I've gone through all the steps I will explain why do you have to take these particular steps, why do you need two videos, blah de blah de blah and how the cells works. So first of all, if you upload the 60 frames per second video just straight up into YouTube, it's gonna be 
knocked down to 30 frames per second because YouTube doesn't allow 60 frames per second. The only, only known way so far to get around this is to upload a video that is 30 frames per second and run it at twice the speed, which results in twice the amount of frames, which is 60 frames per second. So looking at from the other perspective, if you took a video which is 60 frames per second and stretch it twice as long, each of the second would only have 30 frames to show. But then, playing this video with the HTML5 player at twice the speed will result in the original 60 frames per second video. This is something other people have thought up way before me. However, there was one issue with this. Specifically that they also did the same thing with audio. They would take the audio of the video and stretch it out as well and put it in to play with the HTML5 player. Unfortunately, once you do that, the audio gets fucked up because the HTML5 player is using a special function to adjust pitch of the audio file. For those who don't know, if you speed, let's say, voice up, it sounds... Conversely, if you slow something down, it sounds... And this occurs naturally. This is how sounds work. Now, you could say that to, in order to avoid this, you could manually adjust the pitch of the audio to counteract the pitch adjustment that is done in, in the HTML5 player. Unfortunately, pitch adjustments often result in slightly worse audio, and in the case of an HTML5 player, significantly worse audio. I can't say what exactly is the cause of this, is this just the fault of the algorithm, or are some of the audio frames being dropped and that's why it sounds so horrible? It's pretty hard to say, but one thing is for sure, the audio when done like this does not work and sounds horrible. This is exactly why I opted out to simply have the audio play back on an entirely separate video and using the YouTube mashup websites allows to combine the two, the video and the audio footage into one without having to do something crazy like run them in a separate tabs and try to sync them up or whatever which would be fairly ridiculous on your own. And yes, we have to use the HTML5 player because the Flash player, the original one, does not have the option to speed up the audio. Sorry, the video. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. I'm pretty sure that nobody's ever gonna make 60 frames per second videos this way anyway. But in case you have to, well, now you know how. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.